wanted to thank you for taking the time to look in this look into this study from the Gospel of John with me. And I trust you have found it worth the investment of your time. I want to take a few minutes to summarize what we have been looking at and present some concluding remarks. So what was Jesus saying when he made these I am statements in the Gospel of John? As the bread of life, Jesus as Messiah is the one through whom God provides for us, especially through his death. Life in the kingdom age, just as God provided life for the children of Israel in the wilderness with the manna. As the light of the world, Jesus as Messiah has been made a light of the nations so that salvation may reach to the end of the earth. As the gate to the sheepfold, Jesus as Messiah has provided a way of entrance to be a part of the people of God. As the Good Shepherd, Jesus as Messiah provides care for God's people, especially by laying down his life for them. As the resurrection and the life, Jesus as Messiah has died and become the firstborn from the dead and will participate in the raising of those who believe on the last day. As the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus as Messiah provided a way of entrance into the presence of God. As the true vine, Jesus as Messiah provides a way to be connected to God through being connected to Jesus, being pruned by his words, and producing fruit. Through studying this topic, I hope that your appreciation of who Jesus is and what he has done for us has grown and become more special to you. I also hope that your appreciation for the scriptures and the fulfillment that comes from studying them has grown the distinctiveness of this unique human being and what he means to the world has kept, was captured in something written about a hundred years ago by a man named James Francis when he published a compilation of sermons which he called The Real Jesus and Other Sermons. This small bit of prose has come to be known as One Solitary Life, and I would like to share it with you now. I have changed a few words to bring it up to date, but otherwise it is as originally published. A child is born in an obscure village. He is brought up in another obscure village. He works as a craftsman until he is 30 and then for a short time is an itinerant preacher, proclaiming a message and living a life. He never writes a book. He never holds an office. He never raises an army. He never has a family of his own. He never owns a home. He never goes to college. He never travels 200 miles from the place where he was born. He gathers a little group of friends about him and teaches them his way of life. While still a young man, the tide of popular feeling turns against him. The band of followers forsakes him. One denies him. Another betrays him. He's turned over to his enemies. He goes through the mockery of a trial. He is nailed to a cross between two thieves, and when dead is laid in a borrowed grave by the kindness of a friend. Those are the facts of his life. Oh, and he is raised from the dead. Today we look back across 2,000 years and ask what kind of trail has he left across the centuries. When we try to sum up his influence, all the armies that ever marched, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, are absolutely picayune in their influence on mankind compared to that of this one solitary life. Some try to claim that for those of us who do not believe that Jesus is God, that we believe that he is only a mere man. Far from it. We believe that he is the most distinctive, unique, prominent, extraordinary, absolutely singular man in history. As he himself claimed, he is the bread of life, the light of the world, the gate to the sheepfold, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the true and living way to God and the true vine. But in reality, that's not the half of it. Who is he? Who is this Jesus? He is the advocate with the Father the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. 
He is the author and finisher of faith, the bright and morning star, the chief cornerstone, the son of the Most High. He is Emmanuel, the first fruit from the dead, the head of the body, the image of God, the judge of the living and of the dead. Who is Jesus? He is the Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah, the Root of David, the Living One who has died and now lives. He is the Lord of glory, the mediator between God and humanity, the one whose name is above all names, the only way to the Father, the mediator of the new covenant. He is our hope. He is the Passover Lamb. He is the firstborn from the dead. Jesus is the High Priest the Apostle, the King, the Lord, the Priest, the Prophet, the Redeemer, the Rock, and the Savior. He is the second Adam, the seed of the woman, the seed of Abraham, the seed of David, the son of David, the son of man, the son of God, the soon returning Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He is truly Yahweh's anointed. It is this Jesus whom we love and whom we put our trust unto whom we believe, whom we serve as our Lord, to whom we are loyal, whom we bow down before, to whom we are faithful, whom we claim our inheritance with, whose return and reign as King of King and Lord of Lords in God's kingdom we anticipate. I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Please join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for being able to know you, the one true God, and your Son. We praise you for all that you have done for us through your Son, and we rejoice in the promise of life in the age to come where you will be our God and we will be your people. I pray that you give us the strength and encouragement to remain faithful to you and to your son so that we will not grow weary and lose heart. And we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.